Let's talk about your one of your more recent battles, uh, sponsorship, Bud Light. Obviously, you had to stand in the in the batter's box. I was messaging you about that on uh, how you handle yourself when people are coming after you when you make a, a decision like that. Uh, can you talk about can you talk about that uh, recent battle with sponsor with Bud Light? Obviously, you talked about it on Theo's podcast, which I thought was awesome. Thank you. Um, but yeah, share some light. I would love to know what goes on. You know, when you're when you're making that deal, especially when there's probably other suitors in there, uh, people call you a sellout and everything else. Yep. Um, it's, that's that's part of the gig too. When you make when you make tough decisions and you make decisions that, you know, people don't know all the. What you have to understand is it's just like when we were talking about New Year's Eve. If you if you know who I am and understand the way that I operate, and especially at this point in my life and and my age, nothing is about money anymore. I've made money. Everybody thought I was going to retire in 2016. I've made money. I'm I'm good. Um, like going through COVID. I got a really nice fucking house, okay, really nice. I could have fucking camped out for five or six years, however long COVID, but that, that wouldn't have done any good for this fucking company. It wouldn't have done any good for my employees, and it definitely wouldn't have been good for the fighters. So we didn't. We, we, we battled fucking through it. Um, so if I have made the decision to go with Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light, there's a damn good fucking reason. I know the inner workings of the beer business, better than any of the other fucking, these guys out, these fans and all this shit. And basically, they went after Anheuser-Busch for being woke and doing what they did. I think that, you know, obviously I've laid out all the reasons on why I'm way more aligned with Anheuser-Busch than any other beer company out there. Um, and for those of you that haven't heard, 65,000 Americans are employed by Anheuser-Busch. 65,000 Americans, and a lot of them are vets. That alone should be enough reason for you to not try to put a bullet in Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch, number one. Number two, they spend almost a billion dollars a year with U.S. farmers, okay? That should be a fucking reason you do it. All the stuff that they do for uh, first responders and, and vets and, and $44 million spent over the last however many years for their families. Um, every time there's a natural disaster in America, they shut down the plant and turn it into a bottled water facility and they ship out and they've done something crazy like 100 million bottles of bottled water that they've sent out to Americans in need. Give me a fucking break, okay? I am way more aligned with Anheuser-Busch, so that's why I, I did that deal with them. Now, you're, 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 you're going to have people who come and, and, and you have these guys that, um, you know, consider themselves patriots who love this country and everything else. Let me just tell you this. If you consider yourself a patriot, you should be drinking fucking barrels of Bud Light. Believe me when I tell you. All these other beer companies out there, woke is what you're worried about. They're the wokest of the woke. You just haven't fucking seen it or heard about it. So Anheuser-Busch is, is my partner for the next six years, and I'll, I can't fucking wait, and I'm looking forward to it. Was anybody close to Anheuser-Busch? Like, you know, obviously, when you look at whatever gets reported on their sales, dropping everything else, a company like Modelo comes to the top, like is a, a beer brand like a Modelo trying to come to the table and right. sponsor up with uh, UFC. Yeah, well, people can say that it's, you know, oh, it's about money. I was going to get money no matter what. Money was coming, you know what I mean? And trust me, Anheuser-Busch didn't pay me some fucking crazy number that maybe said, you know what? I'm going to throw every fucking thing that I'm about, all of the values that I believe in, right out the window because I'm going to take this money. Yeah. There, there's, there's stories that I could tell you, but I won't. There isn't any fucking amount of money that I will take to not. Uh, when, when you're getting into a sponsorship deal, you're getting into a relationship. Who wants to be in a bad relationship? Nobody. Whether it's with a woman, it's with your family, it's with business partners, or it's a fucking sponsor. You want to be with people that you are aligned with, that the, 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 the purpose of a sponsorship is you pay me money, and the money that you pay me, we work together to build both of our businesses and make them bigger and better. If you are not aligned on most things, you are not going to have that kind of a relationship, and you are not going to have fun, and you're going to be begging to fucking get out of that relationship. So... You should only do deals with people that you are aligned with. Well, what do you say to people that, like the first, you, you said last night, uh, Power Slap has more sponsors this year than UFC did in the first seven years. Right. When you're 
not in the position you are now and you're fighting the good fight establishing the UFC were you did you still have that same mindset well that's, that's or was there not enough leeway like well no that's how you learn yeah that's a good point again like I was talking about my employees and COVID or whatever you don't know who's who or what's what you can be in the best relationship ever right we, we, I could say you know Taylor's my fucking good friend right then the shit hits the fan and I really need Taylor is Taylor there for me Oh, I'm Probably there. Not. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm you, there, brother. You, tell me, everybody in this room hasn't been in that position where you found out who somebody really was when you really needed them. Or right. when you hit rough times or scary times like COVID and shit like this, you know? That's when you find out who's who. And uh, then as you go on, you know, you live and learn, you know? And uh, we, we, we've had some some good sponsors. We've had some bad sponsors. What, what I don't like is when you have a c company or a group of people, it could be a network, it could be anybody, that starts coming in and telling you what to do with your fucking business. You need to do this and you need to do that or we're going to pull our sponsorship. Oh, you can pull your sponsorship and you can take every fucking dollar of your money and roll it up into a little ball and you can shove it right up your fucking ass. <laughs> That's what you can do. Hey, dog, it's like one big motivational video I with this know. guy. I, it's just He's like, like, we're like locking eyes on him. Just yeah. like, Hell I'm yes. Just Hell yes. How you look at Goggins' so, video right now. So imagine you're in the podcast business, mm -hmm. right? And you have a guest. And Peloton calls you. And, and this, guy's, th th this guy, Robert Kennedy Jr., is a, is a, uh, is a Democrat. And, uh, you know, this is America. Uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. has, and, and I've never met Robert Kennedy Jr., just for the record. I mean, it sounds like I'm defending him, like I'm talking about a purse close little friend of mine, like Trump, that, who I've known for fucking many years, and he's one of my very good friends. I don't know Robert Kennedy Jr. I've seen his videos. What about Robert Kennedy Jr. would make your pompous, arrogant fucking ass pick up a phone Bike riding and ass. tell somebody else you better not like like this guy's fucking Hitler or some horrible fucking human being that walks the face of the earth. He's a fucking Kennedy. He's a smart guy. He has his own beliefs and his values. His podcast has to come down. You sell stationary bikes for a fucking living. You are a fucking clown. There is something mentally fucking unstable about you that you have the balls to pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them to take another person, another fucking guy's fucking podcast down. Really wrap your head around that. Do you know what a fucking absolute, pompous, arrogant... I don't, I don't even have the rest of the words for this fucking guy. <laughs> like, let this man cook. Yeah, yeah he just so, kind of sitting yeah. there like, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> fucking mind-boggling to me that you could be that arrogant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you gotta love it too. Like in 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 this age, like how not power has shifted, but this power has been like, you know, created like into the people, into into the ones like promoting the product. Like you hear something like that, and you just make a decision, get him out of the facility. Theo's able 100%. to talk about it because he doesn't feel like he's buttoned in some contract. I know he went through like a contrasting contrasting dispute with the podcast one network, I believe, but he's in a spot where he's talking about it, and people are getting held accountable more so publicly because they're trying to do this backdoor. Hey, you got to take this down. You got to take this down. It's like, no, fuck you, dude. Right, and, and I I don't like cancel culture. And, and I'm not saying, you know, let's boycott Peloton or whatever. I know there's plenty of people that like to ride Pelotons or whatever. M my thing is this, is that um, you have to put it in perspective and think about Robert Kennedy Jr., Theo Vaughn does the podcast, a guy who sells stationary bikes. Who the fuck do you think you are that you would pick up the phone and fucking call? And, and tell him to take his fucking podcast down. It's wild. It's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. But it just shows you the mindset of what a fucking weirdo this guy actually really is. Mm -hmm. I, I just... Peloton and UFC are dead. Done. Yeah, well, Peloton and UFC was never a thing anyway, so it's not like this guy <laughs> yeah, needs to fuck... There are probably hey, some we bikes ripping around. We, like, we only had here. two, and they were in my fucking gym, and they're gone. We ripped <laughs> yeah. them out of it. The, they're gone. They ripped them out right after the fucking So podcast. you used to ride Peloton before, yeah. before, so, before Theo So we're doing before a deal Gary, now with... Before uh, Gary Brecca. Yeah. Yeah. Get up, too much EMF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Ella. <laughs> Echelons. So Echelons. Echelons fucking called me up. These guys are out of fucking Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Shout out Tennessee. Yep. And 
Echelons is now going to replace the bikes in, in there, and they're, they're going to do a deal with uh, Theo Vaughn. That's, That's fucking awesome. Yeah, that, that is awesome. And you said you kind of brokered that deal, right? Yeah, the, they called me here. I had every fucking bike company on earth calling me the next day. Um, I mean, but smart these, guys are from, these guys are from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Guy's a fucking solid guy. I talked to him on the phone. And, uh, and uh, yeah, they're going to do a deal with Theo, and he can have fucking Robert Kennedy Jr. fucking and every other Kennedy and anybody else in his fucking podcast that he wants to because this is America. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do when you own your own fucking show. On the internet, hell yes. I think I feel like after this this like show comes out, there's gonna be like so many more people just enlist in the army. Like you're making, <laughs> yeah. you're making it like you're bringing patriotism <laughs> back, brother. You're like Toby Keith when Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue came out after 9/11. That's you right now. You're killing it. <laughs> but am I wrong? Am I am no? I, not no, at all. Am no, I listen, off base? Like, am I nuts here? No. Nah. The, the proud boy in me is going a little nuts inside right now. I'm getting <laughs> fired up. You got me going a little bit because it's. Land of free, brother. Like you, you're able. That's why people come here, is to establish their dream and keep it going. And for somebody, stationary bike guy, wants to come and tell you what to do about your own business. It's a it's a crazy concept it, that 100%. people have, for whatever reason, have this like arrogance to believe that they can just tell you what to do with whatever you want. One hundred percent. Like with because hey, because I've given you money for this show, you're not allowed to have X, Y, and Z on your 100%. show. One hundred percent. You can't mm -hmm. have your own fucking opinion, your own beliefs, your own whatever. Um, so I'm going to take the money away. So what they try to do is they, they try to create this, this, this fear and this image. Oh, my God. Stationary bike guy fucking pulled his money away. So the other companies go, should we be scared too? Should we pull our money away? Fuck you. Fuck, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. disgusting. It's fucking gross. And, and it just, it's so hard for me to wrap my brain around how fucking arrogant one human being can be. And, and think that he, you know. Right, can make a call like that. Uh, th like off the whole sponsorship and everything else with Peloton and the Bud Light stuff, it's like the Peloton thing happens. You have a decision, you're like, oh, uh, burn the boats. Like get Peloton out, yada, yada, yada. I'll, I'm curious, like what happens in your mind when you're trying to say, because you also have to stay fluid in some of these relationships, like when something changes and happens, like you weren't with Bud Light for a, for a while, the stuff goes down with the, uh, with the cans and everything else, like kind of keeping that, you know, still kind of being there for if a deal does come back to you. Does that make sense? It's like you don't bite your tongue on the Peloton stuff. A lot of people would assume that the people who you're aligned with, the way they go after Bud Light, when the uh, Dylan can comes out and everything else, I don't know if you had a... A statement on it? I, I have no clue. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and look it up to make this like a better Me? question. Yeah, no, I, had, I had nothing to say about right, it. Right, but That's, when when the Bud Light deal comes back around, like how um, important is it to stay fluid, thinking like you know, well, keeping a relationship open? I listen, guess. going going into that, I knew exactly uh, what we would have to face doing a deal with Bud Light, but it's it's more about like I told you guys. All, I look at all the good things they've done. You know, if you look at them as a whole, as a company, Anheuser-Busch is a bad, they've had some of the greatest ads in the history of the world. When I grew up, right, I was a big boxing guy. Every fucking thing I ever remember was Budweiser. Budweiser, the king of beers. Every fucking fight had, had, had their, you know, their backing, their logos were fucking everywhere. You grew up on Budweiser, the king of beers. The three frogs. You know, it's very... <laughs> yeah, the three frogs, Clydesdale, yeah, the foggy morning, back. going yeah. through a meadow. Yeah. Exactly. Wonder, hey, where are these horses headed? And yeah. you know exactly where they're headed. So to we the factory, as Americans, baby. it's very nostalgic for us, that, that brand. And if you dive deeper into the company and, and, and the heart and soul of the company and what they are, who they are, and what they stand for, I am way more aligned with them than I am with any other beer company. That right now, six years from now, could be a different story. But for the next six years, I am fucking excited, and I cannot wait to be in business with Anheuser Busch and Bud Light. So 